APNVideo.com is on the air. We're coming to you from the winter home of the Los Angeles Angels. Tempe Diablo Stadium on a sun splash morning for baseball at 9 a.m. start time in the 50 and over desert division. It's Bill Talon's Carolina Cobras and the Red Deer legend led by the Hall of Famer Rube Waddell. These two teams come in with records of five wins and no losses. I don't know if winning this game is going to have a big effect on positioning in the playoffs. Obviously, the one seed will play a lower seed. But with some of these lower seed teams, you never know when they're going to bring in a ringer, a, a tough pitcher, fly a guy in, and you know just evens the playing field. But both these teams have put up a lot of runs this week, averaging 18 for the Cobras per game and over 20 runs a game for Red Deer. And the Cobras have been the stingiest team in the 50 and over desert division. As you go look at some of the mainstays of the legends, had a chance to talk to Bill Talon before the game, and he tells us about his starting pitcher, Jim McVitie. Uh, Starting pitcher? Hey, who's starting today? (laughs) Who's starting you? Oh, that guy. And uh, Big Dave. Uh, Jim McVitie, hell of a All-American. He... uh, Really good control, throws a, lot, throws a lot of different pitches out there, a lot of different speeds. Um, he'll vary, he'll change it up, works in and out, works it out. So he had a great outing, uh, uh, I think on our game two, he had a, just a phenomenal outing against, uh, I think it was uh, Wild Things, but he was, I caught him that game and he was hitting his marks, uh, kept the walks down. And so, yeah, good command and control. So, you good? Jim McVitie will be going up against the right-hander Phil Letts, and both these starting pitchers here today would be considered workhorses. They like to go deep into the game. They can throw a lot of pitches, and we're ready to go. The first pitch of the contest to Bobby Lovett is inside for ball one, and this game is underway. So both teams coming out with a five-win, no-loss record. Lovett, along with Teammate and the man in the number two position in the Cobras lineup, Quincy Marshall, are outstanding table setters. Here's a line smash foul, and it's one and two. It'll be Lovett, Marshall, and then the shortstop, Jerry Russell. Here's a chopping ball to the second baseman. He makes a nice grab at that one, and we'll throw him out at first base. One up and one down. That'll bring up Quincy Marshall, one of the fastest players on the field, starting in right field today. Jeff Goulam got the start at second base, and you saw lefty Loney at first base making the putout. First pitch to Quincy is inside ball one. Just underway, no score from Tempe Diablo Stadium on APM Video Sports. And our coverage of the 2024 Men's Senior Baseball League's World Series. And a chopping ball to the shortstop. He dives, can't come up with it. And Quincy Marshall has the first hit of the ball game as he reaches safely at first base for Jerry Russell, the next batter up. Russell looks like more of a power-hitting first baseman than a shortstop. Here's the pitch in there for a strike. You know, so many times you'll hear hitters say, you know, you might get one good pitch per at bat, and that might have been it. That ball was right down the middle, off speed. Phil Letts on the mound, the right-hander, and he delivers, and that one is in there for a strike, and the stolen base attempt by Quincy Marshall is a successful one. So two strikes on Jerry Russell. We're in the top of the first inning, and here's a fly ball to left field and down the line, and it's going to be just foul. So another two-strike count coming up to Jerry. The runner at second and one out, and he fouls this one straight back. And ground ball, base hit up the middle. 
Marshall being waved around, and he will score without a throw. And just like that, the Cobras lead one to nothing. Well, the ex-Army veteran Bill Talon will come to the plate, the manager of the Carolina Cobras. General manager of the team, and the first pitch is low for ball one. One ball, no strikes. Dino Svensson is doing the catching here today for Red Deer. And that one just under the knees and a quick throw down to first base. And Jerry Russell, who just picked up an RBI hit. And swinging all the way, he had the green light, was Bill Talon, and come up empty-handed. And now the count runs to two balls and one strike. We're in the top of the first. One to nothing, Carolina Cobras. And he got under that one and pops it up to the third baseman who is calling for it in fair territory and hauls it in for out number two. So I'll bring up the fifth place hitter, Ralph Cedillo. Two out runner at first base. Cobras up one to nothing, top of the first. The Cobras. Somebody needs to turn their phone off. Hey, we're trying to do a game here. Um, The Cobras coming in, scoring 89 runs as this one's popped foul right side. 89 runs in five games. That's averaging just under 14 a game. They were the stingiest team in the desert. As this one is grounded down to third and just foul. So they gave up 19 runs in those five games. I mean, that's pretty impressive. On the other side, Red Deer scored 104. They gave up 31. But their differential was a plus 71. And the Cobras was a plus 70. So those are some prolific numbers going into the final day of round robin or pool play, whatever you want to call it. Phil Letts has given up a run on two hits. He's got a runner at first base, two in out, and Ralph Cedillo at the plate and the pitch, and it's grounded to third and again a foul ball. I believe this is the eighth pitch of the at-bat coming up here to Ralph Cedillo, who is really making Phil Letts work. He continues to battle against Phil Letts. Here's the pitch. And the changeup is a pop-up where the catcher will make the catch. That ball was not hit that high. And you got to negotiate the face mask. That was a a very nice play by Dino Svensson. After a half, the Cobras lead it 1-0 as you get a look at their starting pitcher, Jim McVitie. Another workhorse, and it's going to be interesting to see how long these two pitchers are going to go. And here is a bunt by Glenn Williams, their leadoff hitter. Nobody was at the bag, and he is going to be safe with an infield bunt single. Outstanding job. Fizio Letts will be the second place hitter. Glenn Williams apparently... Taking second base, and he is already in scoring position. And a chopping ball down to first. Nice play down there. And that is going to be the first out of this inning. Bob Patterson on a hot shot. That ball is traveling about 88 miles an hour off the bat of Letts. Thanks to StatCast and the exit velocity. And now third place hitter is Rusty LeCate. Runner at third with one out. As the Red Deer legends try to equalize here in the home half of the first inning. LeCate and then Ian Cato if they get that far. 
Glenn Williams with a bunt leadoff single. He moved to second and was moved over to third on a quality at bat by Letts. And he stands at third base 90 feet away from tying this game up here in the bottom of the first inning. Swung on and fouled out of play. A couple of strikes here on Rusty Lacate. As I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Red Deer averaging 20 runs a game. Fly ball left field. This is going to be a foul ball. So a good battle between Jim McVitie and Rusty Lacate. Legends batting, trailing one to nothing. That's too far inside. Was that a balk? Not sure. Umpire didn't see it. Here's the pitch. And a line drive, and that's foul. Well, this is kind of like the Ralph Cedillo at bat when he was battling Phil Letts in the top of the first. And I believe this is the 10th pitch of the at bat. And he loops one over the pitcher's head. It's going to drop into no man's land. And that's going to look like a 100-mile-an-hour fastball off the battle of Kate tomorrow in the paper. But right now, he's tied the game up with an RBI infield hit. And now the cleanup hitter is Ian Cato. <laughs> Quick check of the runner over there, and he's going to check over there again. Rusty Lacate representing the go-ahead run here for Red Deer. We're in the bottom half of inning number one. And a ground ball to the right side where the second baseman, Goos Gunzenhauser, turns a 4-6-3 double play along with Jerry Russell. Well, an outstanding 4-6-3 double play. And after a half, or one inning of play, I should say, we are tied at one apiece. And welcome back to Tempe Diablo Stadium on a beautiful morning. Game time temperature right now, 81 degrees. Top of the second inning, and the Cobras will send up their 6, 7, and 8 hitters to include Scott Leonard, Tim Fujioka, and center fielder Ron Russo. Cobras got a run. Quincy Marshall, a base hit, a stolen base, and came in on the RBI single by Jerry Russell. Top of the second, 1-1 one, one tie. And here's a chopping ball that's going to have some eyes and find center field base hit. That's the third hit of the day for the Cobras, and they're off and running here in the top of the second inning. Tim Fujioka. Good solid hitter, a, I would say a contact hitter. Hits for average. He's got a runner at first, and we'll see how aggressive they are. He squares the bunt, and that evens the count at one ball, one strike. Second inning of work for starting pitcher Phil Letts. Two balls and one strike. Left that last pitch a little too high. And now a line shot in the right. And the first two have reached here with a base hit. So good hustle by Scott Leonard getting over there at second base. Outfield playing shallow and right. So Fujioka with a single. That's hit number four for the Cobras. And now center fielder Ron Russo at the plate. And this may be a bunting situation for Carolina. We're in a 1-1 tie. Bill Talon looking on from the third base dugout, occupied currently by the Carolina Cobras. Courtesy runner, the speedy Bobby Lovett. Well, that's nice that you can courtesy run one of your fastest players. And here's a bunt, but it's going to go foul. So just as I anticipated, 
No balls, one strike on Ron Russo. And he squares around and lays an outstanding bunt. He may beat this one out. The throw to first is going to be in time and a sensational defensive play by the third baseman. Can't play it any better than Rusty Lacade at third base. The sacrifice goes 5-3. to three. And the first pitch to Devin Labolita is a called strike, and it's nothing in one. Rob Wojcicki is on deck. Pitch and a swing and a fly ball out in the center field, and that ball's going to drop in. One run is going to score, and they'll hold the runner at third as Leonard comes across on the RBI single by Devin, and he is at first base, first and third with one out, and Rob Wojcicki coming to the plate. So it's 2-1 to one. Cobras here in the top of the second inning. Both these teams with a 70 run differential through the five games that both of these teams have played. If you're watching this game, uh, you may want to check out our Marucci videos of the day. And I think we've got two for this game. Here's a smash, and that's over the head of the second baseman out in the right center field. And Lovett will score the courtesy runner. Two runs are in, and the Cobras lead it 3-1. to one. Now one of the great baseball names of all time, Chris Gunzenhauser. And he takes, apparently, a pitch that was a little high. Phil Lett's not liking the call. It's one ball and one strike, or one ball and no strikes on Chris with Roger Clemons on deck. Quick throw down to first, and I think they got him. And they did, and getting an argument here. So Rob gets picked off. That play goes two to three. There's two down in the inning. Still a runner in scoring position. I know the Cobras would love to pick up a runner here. And this one is popped up on the infield. Two runs in the inning for the Cobras. And they leave one. And at the end of an inning and a half of baseball, the Cobras now with a 3-1 lead. All right, back here at Tempe Diablo Stadium. Svensson, the catcher, will start things off. He'll be followed by Lefty Loney and Sean O'Sullivan. So you got the 5, 6, and 7. Legend scored in the first on an RBI single by Rusty Lacate. One ball and one strike. Second inning of work for Jim McVitie, the starting pitcher today. For Bill Talon's Carolina Cobras, we're in the 50 and over Desert Division. The wind, the kick, and the delivery. And it's under the knees, and that's going to be ball four. First walk issued by Jim McVitie. So first baseman, Lefty Loney at the plate. When Rue Baudel gave me the lineup and he said, yep, that's Lefty Loney, I thought he said, she left me lonely. Okay, that was a bad joke. Hard-hitting first baseman at the plate. And a quick throw over to first, and that one was very close. That's a pretty good move there by McVitie. 50 and over, Desert Division.
teams generally in this age group and in this division as that's ball four the first two have reached via the walk but you'll see a lot of these teams very aggressive on the base paths stealing you know most games you're probably going to have four or five stolen bases per team upon the average so McVitie after a meeting of the minds will set his sights on Sean O'Sullivan and he squares the bunt third base side McVitie's really his only play was the third and the throw was late a great play by McVitie to make it close down there at the hot corner and now the bases are loaded O'Sullivan with an infield hit because I don't think he had a chance and you know where of throwing him out at first base he had too much momentum going away from the first base bag to turn and throw and get a fairly speedy O'Sullivan. So now the manager, Rue Bladell, he takes a strike, a.k.a. Larry, or maybe it's Larry, a.k.a. Rue Bladell. You're talking to him before the game. We have a soundbite from Rue Bladell, and we'll air that after the second inning. We have to have our uh, station break and, of course, our commercials after the first. That's out of play. So at the end of this second inning, we will play that. We will roll the tape of Rue Boydell's interview. Colorful guys. He loops one in the right field. This is trouble. It's going to drop in for a hit. And the second run is going to come in for the Red Deer Legends, and it's now 3-2. to two. So an RBI hit for Rue Bladell. And it's a one-run affair. The bases remain loaded for Jeff Goulam. It's a round of applause from our near-capacity crowd and swings and lines one to left field. That's going to drop in for a hit. Good line drive single with an exit velocity right around 90 miles per hour. And that one dropped in front of the left fielder. It's an RBI single. And just like that, we are tied again at three apiece. Our second tie here in the early stages of this MSBL World Series game. Trent Musselman, the 10th place hitter, he's sharing that with third baseman Corey Johnson. A-B hitters in the number 10 spot. Glenn Williams is on deck. That's ball four. So he's walked in a run, and for the first time in this morning affair, the Red Deer Legends has the lead at four to three. Four to three is our score here in the home half of inning number two. Here's a ground ball as Williams batting for the second time. And quite honestly, I don't think Jerry Russell had a play anywhere. The runner going from second to third would have beaten the throw. And Williams has an RBI. And it's now 5-3. to three. It's a four-run home half of the second inning. Now Letts bounced out to third base his first time up, but it was a quality at bat because he moved a runner from second to third with nobody out. And it helped lead to Rusty Lacate. And in fact, had he not done that, they might not have scored in that first inning. But they have scored four times here, and here's a fly ball to right. It's going to be caught. The catch is made, and here's the throw home, and it's going to be just late. A sacrifice fly for Letts, and then the throw down to second, and Williams is in safely. Heads up base running right there. So another run scores. That makes it 6-3. to three. Five runs have come across here from Tempe Diablo Stadium in the home half of the second inning. Now Lacate, and he swings and wallops one, but just foul down the line. (laughs) 
2-1. Two balls and one strike on Rusty Lacate. It has been a fruitful inning for Red Deer. They still have the bases loaded. Nice job by Lovett behind home play, corralling that loose ball. As they look for more here, Ian Cato, the cleanup hitter on deck. High chopper to third. It's over his head. And down the left field line, another run is in. As Trent Musselman scores, that is the sixth run of the inning. And they lead it by a score of 7-3. to three. So an RBI hit, and Rusty's two for two with two RBI at-bats. Ian Cato. Runners are at first and second now. Six runs in here in the bottom half of inning number two. Cato hit into a 4-6-3 double play his first time up. He takes outside for ball one. It has been a rough inning for Jim McVitie. He walked three of the first six batters, and it's been downhill since, but he is still out there, and he is still battling against this Legends offense. And here's a ground ball base hit in the right field. Let's see if this loads the bases. They're going to hold the runner. So the bases are loaded once again. How many times have I said that here in the home half of the second inning? First, second, and third, and the batter is going to be Dino Svensson. The starting catcher for the Legends. Six runs have come across. It's 7-3, to three, and Jim McVitie not happy. I don't think he's happy with himself right there as the first offering was outside for ball one. Up foul, and that'll even the count at one ball and one strike. In the air, left field. The left fielder coming over, and he cannot make a play. Scott Leonard. They'll go station to station. It's a seven-run inning. As Williams scores for the second time in two innings. Eight to three is our score here. Now lefty. Lefty drew a walk earlier in this second inning. Seven runs in. And still only one out. I haven't been given the outs in this inning, but only one man out. That was the sack fly by Letts. And here's a pop-up on the infield. The second baseman, Gunzenhauser, will take care of business and a huge second out. If you can stop the bleeding here, you're only down by five if you're the Carolina Cobras. And now facing a guy who had a base hit earlier this inning, a tough hitter in O'Sullivan. Bases loaded, two out. And a smash down the line off the glove of the third baseman. It's going to get by the left fielder. Three runs are going to come across. It is a 10-run home half of the second inning. And it's 11-3 Red Deer Legends. A three-run double by Sean O'Sullivan. He turned on an inside fastball. He got the barrel out in front. And drove it right down the line. StatCast, powered by Google, tells us that ball traveled an estimated 95 miles per hour after it hit the bat. Inside ball one. Second time for Rube Waddell. With a runner at second, two outs, and ten runs in here in the second inning. And a ground ball in the hole. This is going to be another hit. Waddell is going to be two for two. Well, he made it a lot closer than I thought he would have. So Waddell is in with a base hit. And the hit parade just keeps it coming. Twelve hits in total now 
Second time for Jeff in this second inning coming to the plate. It's inside ball one. I guess the silver lining with the situation the Cobras have put themselves in, you're down eight runs, but it's only the bottom of the seventh inning. There's plenty of time. And, you know, I think, you know, if, if I'm managing the Cobras, I'm telling my guys we need we need base runners, obviously, and show some patience up there. Let Phil Letts throw some pitches to you. And here's a looper to the shortstop, routine play, to retire the side. Had a chance to talk to Rube Waddell before the game. Now let's roll that tape. It's a great game. I grew up in Southern California back in the 60s where baseball was the game to play. And as a kid, like everybody else there, I started playing when I was seven years old, got involved in Little League. And then I kind of aged out of that and then had the good fortune after having moved up to Canada uh, of uh, getting involved in a men's league when they started a 45 and over division. So uh, that got me back in. I've actually played more baseball since I was 45 than I did when I was a kid. Uh, where are you from originally? Uh, a little town called Port Wyoming, California, Ventura County. Okay. And uh, how do you look uh, going into the sixth and final game of full play, undefeated at five and zero? Oh? Yeah, I think I think we look good. We got a good squad. We play with the Red Deer Legends. Um, which gives most guys in Canada who want to play ball a chance to play. We've got uh, 13 guys from the Vancouver area, British Columbia, three Albertans, and a uh, guy from San Diego and a guy from uh, New Jersey. But I think the thing that makes our team strong is, is we all come with the same approach to the game, even though from, we're from a lot of different places. It's kind of like a friend of mine said, you know, it's a real simple game. You throw the ball, you catch the ball, you hit the ball. Some days you win, some days you lose, some days it rains. And when we're from in Vancouver, it rains a lot. So sometimes we play even when it rains. It's kind of like that song that always rains in Southern California, except the opposite of that where we live. So, so we're looking pretty good, I think. Well, a special thanks to the manager, Rube Waddell, a.k.a. Larry, or maybe it's Larry, a.k.a. Rube Waddell. I like this right here. You give up 10 runs in the inning. You're down 11-3. to three, And they hold a little team meeting just to get everybody in there. Hey, we're not out of this game yet. And that's a sign of an awfully good team that's coming in here with a record of five wins and no losses. So we go to the top half of the third inning. Bobby Lovett will start things off. And I think I... Stand corrected here. Or check that. Roger Clemens leads things off here. Stand corrected. The Cobras are averaging nearly 18 runs a game. I think I shorted them a little bit. You know, that's that good Ohio elementary math, which I'm usually pretty good at. But they have scored 89 runs. They're just shy of averaging 18 runs a game. And a leadoff walk to Roger Clemens, the final hitter in the lineup. It turns over the lineup, that is. And here is Bobby Lovett for the second time. He fouls one off, and it's nothing in one. So... They've averaged 18. They have a differential, run differential, of 70. So that's, and maybe that's what I said, that would be 14 a game. And the Cobras, same thing. They've given up uh, 33 runs, but they have scored 104, so they're averaging just over 20 a game. Pop up second base side, and Gula makes the catch. And there's one down here in the top of the third. 11-3 to three is our score. And here's a high chopper with the team in the field in the lead. And the throw to first and the speedy Quincy Marshall will beat it out. So a good job there. Good hustle. Two down in the inning. And now Jerry Russell, an RBI single his first time up. I'd like to thank both managers for joining us in the pregame. I was able to corral Bill before the game, uh, but he was warming up, and I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk a little baseball. Actually, he was telling us a little bit about his starting pitcher, McVitie, as the runner takes off for second, and that'll be a stolen base.
Well, let's see if the Cobras can try to knock some of that deficit. They're down by eight runs here. And they got one of their top players in Jerry Russell up there. And he slaps one to the left side, and that ball's going to be picked up there by Johnson. He'll throw to first, and the side is retired. No runs, one hit, one left. After two and a half, the Legends have an eight-run lead. Back at the ballpark, and the man who just made the play at shortstop, I believe. Yep, he turns around, and there's Corey Johnson batting for the first time. Home half of the third inning. That pitch is inside for a ball. And this is the third inning of work for Jim McVitie. He saw the third baseman for the Cobras playing well in on the line down there at third base. McVitie had control problems in the second. All the runs in that inning, unfortunately, are earned. Don't look at the stats, Jim. Here's a ground ball to the right side, and it's going to be picked off by the second baseman. Outstanding defensive play by Gusenhauser. He had to go literally out into right field. I'll tell you what, that was a Roberto Alomar-like play. Remember, he played second base like he was a shortstop. One of the great second basemen of all time. Not only hitting, but I think defensively you could, I don't know who's better than old Roberto Alomar. And that was the kind of plays he made day in and day out. Here's a chopper off the bat of Williams. Fielded there by Russell, taking his time. A high throw, and I think the runner would have beat that throw anyway and would give him a base hit. So Glenn Williams has the 13th hit of the ball game for the Legends. And now the batter is Letts, batting for the third time. 0 for 1 with a sack fly in that 10-run second. The wind to kick the pitch. And here's a looper out in the left field, caught by the left fielder. Two down, Scott Leonard. Nice running catch as he had to come in for that low-sinking, soft-hit line drive. Two down, and here's Rusty Lacate. He's had a pair of singles in this game. And he skies one out in the left center field. And Russo is there. No runs, one hit, and one left on at the end of three from Tempe Diablo Stadium in the 24 World Series. The Red Deer legend lead it 11 to three. All right, we go now to the top of the fourth inning, and Bill Tallon, the manager of the Cobras, will start things off. He pops it up to the second baseman, and he's under it and drops the ball. He dropped the ball, and, well, Bill's going to reach on an error. Now get a courtesy runner for him. E4, and there is Bill as... Former member, and thank you for your service of the United States Army. Okay, now Ralph Cedillo. So you got a runner at first, nobody out. Look like Jerry Russell, courtesy running, and then Cedillo looking for his first hit of the ball game. Top of the fourth inning, down by eight. The Cobras bat here in the top of the fourth. They need, a, they need to pick up a couple of runs here. A good little four spot could put them right back in the ball game. They've been averaging 18 runs a game as this one's lined over the head of the shortstop and into center field a base hit. And a good start here for the Carolina Cobras. They got runners at first and second. That's the second hit of the ball game. Seventh hit of the ball game for the Cobras. Another courtesy runner. Runners occupying first and second for Scott Leonard. He squares the bunt. He pops it up. The catcher, he drops the ball. He'll pick it up, throw to first, not in time. And now they got the runner hung up between second and third. And that will be an easy out right there. So runners are still at first and second with one out. 
Unfortunately, they're going to charge an error to the catcher, Dino Svensson. Fujioka, who had a base hit and a run scored in the second inning, comes to the plate. And this one slapped foul and out of play. And a line drive to shortstop. He knocks it down, but he won't have a play. And all hands are going to be safe. So credit Tim with a base hit. The second of the inning. Eight hits in total now. And the next batter up is Russo. He hits one to the shortstop. They'll go second one. Throw it on to first. And it's not in time. But the fielder's choice produces a run here. And that'll make it a score of 11-4. to four. Cobras could really use a couple of runs here. It'd be nice to see them. And not, nothing against Red Deer. But it would be nice to see them maybe get it, claw back, get maybe three or four here, claw back in it, make it a competitive game. And you never know. You never know. We had a game, uh, what, last night or two nights ago as the runner takes off for second, and that's going to be a stolen base, and here comes the runner home. Scott Leonard will score two runs in the inning. As Devin Labolita trying to make something happen here or rather Ron yeah I'm sorry Devin Labolito who had an RBI single his last time up and a pop up that the third baseman will take care of and that will retire the side but they at least they got a couple of runs here now can just work on getting into striking distance Jim McVitie looked very good in the third inning after giving up a lot of runs in the second. And he is back out there. He had a very efficient inning. He gave up an infield hit to Glenn Williams, and that was it. Pitch count probably in the low to mid-80s right now after the efficient inning. And this is a guy that could probably... You know, give you 130, 150 pitches in a ball game. Uh, he's just got a rubber arm. He, he and Phil Letts are the workhorse of this team as we head to the bottom half of the fourth inning. And it's now 10, make that 11 to 5 in favor of the Red Deer Legends. First up is cleanup hitter Ian Cato. He had a base hit his last time up. And that's going to be a called strike. And that'll keep the batter in the batter's box at least for another pitch. Red Deer got a run in the first, 10 in the second. As the Carolina Cobras, as this one's bounced to the first baseman, he'll take it to the bag himself. No, he didn't. That ball snuck through. I'll tell you what, it is tough to pick up the baseball here. No question about it. I thought he had it the way he was going to the bag. So it's a leadoff single for Cato. That is his second hit of the game. He's two for three. And now Svensson. Been on base twice. He's got two runs, a run scored, and a walk, and two times up. And a throw over to first, and the runner is back in safely. 11-5 11-5, ground ball, hot shot to third. He'll go to second, get the out there, and a hard slide down at second base. But nonetheless, that was a tremendous defensive play down at the Cobra's hot corner. And there's one down. Nice job by Rob. Lefty Loney takes a strike. Looking for his first hit. He walked and scored. Now I'm saying that you know some of these guys actually have a courtesy runner, so I'm not keeping track of that. But 
That spot, I think you almost have to give it to the hitter. Here's a ground ball right side. They'll go second one, and the throw on to first is a double play. Outstanding job. That's the second double play turned in by the Cobras defense. End of four. We go to the fifth, 11 to five in favor of the Red Deer legend. You're watching the 2024 MSBL World Series on ABN. Jeff Lowry back here. We go to the top of the fifth inning, and this is our trivia question inning. Rob will start it off. Rob, Chris, and Roger. First pitch is inside ball one. And this was a question I found on the Internet, and I'll tell you that I had I got the top three guys, if you're even interested. Um, I got the top three guys. Uh, the other two, number four. I think I would have got him if I put a little time into it as this one has bounced down the line foul. Rob up there for the second time. RBI single his first time up. And he swings and sends one into deep right center field. And that ball is going to get away from that right fielder. And now the center fielder has to come over and corral it. And that's going to be a leadoff two-base hit for Waiki and a double. That is hit number nine. So a two-base hit for the Cobras. Can they climb back in to this game? They are down by six, and that's never a safe league in the MSBL World Series. Now Gunzenhauser, and he chops one to the shortstop. He's got it. And the long throw to first in time for the out. Nice job by the new shortstop who is Rook DeBross. One of the great names you'll hear in the MSBL World Series. Runner stays at second base. Roger Clemens walked back in the third. So our trivia question. Can you name the career home run leaders in Major League Baseball history? amongst switch hitters. The switch hitters all-time career home run leaders. The first one should be kind of obvious if you're a half-decent baseball fan. Fly ball center, caught, and then two down. Just like that, two away. Go back to the top of the order. Bobby Lovett is looking for his first hit. No balls and one strike. Started the game as the catcher for the Cobras. So the all-time, the top five all-time home run leaders, career leaders in home runs by a switch hitter. Here's a bouncing ball to the shortstop. Charging is Rook, and he'll fire on the first to retire the side. And we're halfway through this morning affair from Tempe Diablo Stadium. The Legends by six. Hey, get a look at the starting pitcher, Jim McVitie, coming out for his fifth inning as he approaches 100 pitches. Slick fielding Corey Johnson. I think he's over there trying to steal some signs from the Carolina Cobras. And he better be careful because the FBI is watching very closely. First pitch inside, ball one. Sean O'Sullivan, he had that big three-run double in that 10-run second. And just a side note right here about Jim McVitie. Most pitchers, most people, give up 10 runs in an inning, they would be begging the manager to take him out of the game, and yet he is still in there. He does give up a walk here. He had walked three of the first six hitters that he faced in that second inning. That's the first walk since the second inning as he pitches here in the bottom half of the fifth. I think it's a tribute to Jim McVitie that he is out there. He's approaching 100 pitches. He had well over 40 pitches in that second inning.
And a tip of the cap to him, no question about it. Had a really nice performance in their game against the Wild Things earlier in the week. As we mentioned, both these teams, as Rube Waddell looking for his third hit, and he high flies one out in the left field, and Marshall, who moved from right to left, will make the catch. A nice running catch for out number one. Goulam will bat. He's one for two with an RBI and a run scored. First pitch to him. Swung on and missed. The all-time home run leaders amongst the switch hitters in Major League Baseball. One ball, one strike. Well, let's see. Three of them are in the Hall of Fame. One of them, there's an argument for him, I would say. He had a lot of his home runs in the, well, the last two guys. Actually, uh, the last three guys, most of their career was in that, what you would call the steroid era. Ground ball, shortstop, second one. Throw it on the first. That's an inning-ending double play. Well, that's the third double play turned in here. As Russell and Guzen, Gunzenhauser, one of the great names in baseball history. We go to the sixth. It's still a six-run lead for Red Deer on APN. Jeff Lowry back here. We go to the top of the sixth inning from Tempe's Diablo Stadium. And a comebacker to the mound. He fields, he throws, and just ahead of the speedy Quincy Marshall for out number one. Fine, fine defensive play by the Legends pitcher. Not always easy to come off that mound and field a ground ball and threw perfectly as Jerry Russell is up there, and he slaps one off the end of the bat to the right side where the second baseman fields and throws the lefty at first base, two down. So they're going after these first two pitches. And here's Bill Talon looking for his first hit. And he pops it up, and this one's going to find the seats backing out of play. Bill looking for his first hit. You know, Bill's a a guy, and he gave me a mug with the Cobra's logo and this cool baseball on there. And I'll tell you what, I'll I'll be using it, no question about it. Uh, He does a lot of the designs. He can make logos. They can put it on a coffee mug or a T-shirt and all that kind of thing. So I should have asked him for their company's website. Could have touted his business as this one's popped up. Tough play for the catcher, and he will not have a play. Been working with Bill for the last few years, and uh, always a pleasure to cover this Cobras team. They may have the best logo in the MSBL World Series. I'd like to see a better one. Pitch. And he swings and hits one to right field. Will this get down? It is going to be caught on a spectacular diving catch by Trent Musselman. And that'll retire the side. A spectacular catch worthy of the Marucci big play of the day. We go to the home half of the sixth inning. Still a six-run Legends lead. Okay, well, that was was the starting lineup for the Carolina Cobras. Somehow that got in here. And the man, how many times does this happen? You hear announcers talk about it all the time. A guy will make a tremendous play in the field, and he's the first guy up in the next half inning. And guess who's coming out for his sixth inning? Better than 100, approaching 110 pitches in this game is Jim McVitie. McVitie and Letts both in there. Here's a ground ball up the middle and picked off by Russell, the shortstop, but his high throw is not in time. That'll be an infield hit for Musselman. Hit number 15 for the Red Deer legend. 
Top of the order, perfect at the plate is Glenn Williams. Three singles, two runs, and an RBI. Runner at first, nobody out, and the pitch is outside, ball one. And that's in there for a called strike. Good pitch. Let's see a big vid. He tries to run a maybe something like a hard fastball up and in a little bit here. Yep, that's well, that was a breaking pitch. And he missed two and one. That one one pitch is so important because it's the next pitch is the difference between being one and two on a hitter or two and one. And now it's three balls and one strike. Runner at first, nobody out. Red Deer batting. And a swing and a miss, and the count runs full. Three balls, two strikes. Right-handed pitcher delivers, and a high chopper to the right side. Will the pitcher get over there in time? He does, but... Glenn Williams runs very well, and he is in with his fourth base hit. He is four for four on the day. He might be our uh, APM player of the game. So two on, nobody out, and Letts is up there for the fourth time. Physio Letts, left-handed hitter. And... One and one, quick throw down the first, not in time. Well, I think we could get through this uh, trivia question inning. Uh, You talk about some of the names on this list. Number five, I forgot he was a switch hitter, to be honest with you. A guy had some big seasons with the New York Yankees, first baseman. Mark Teixeira had 409 Home runs, switch hitter, number five on the all-time switch hitter home run list. Number four, and a lot of people, I've heard this, as he squares the bunt and lays one down, that's a beautiful bunt, and the only play is to first. So a sacrifice that goes one to three. Good job by Letts, and now Rusty Lacate. There is Tom Prendergast, the tournament director. I've known Tom since probably 1997 out of Kansas City, Missouri. Lacate up there, he's had two RBI singles. He's two for three. And I think Bill just wants to make sure that they're not batting out of order or anything like that. Just being a little prudent out there as we play here in the bottom of the six. 11 to 5, Red Deer batting. They lead it. Actually, this is, is this not rusty? Hold on a minute. This is Roberts and a high fly ball left field. Let's see if this gets the run in and a good throw comes in. And corralling it is Bobby Lovett, but the run does score in Musselman. And that makes it a 12-5 to ball game. Runner stays at second. So Roberts flies out the left field. Sorry he didn't catch that. It's not like, well, they're saying he left early, but the umpire says no, he didn't. So it's 12-5 to here in the bottom of the sixth inning. A run is in, a runner at second, and now two outs for Ian Cato. So the guy that's number four on that list, and many I've heard would like to see him in the Hall of Fame, Carlos Beltran. He was a big-time performer in the postseason. His great years were in Houston. Number three is in the Hall of Fame. He spent his entire career with the Atlanta Braves. Here's a fly ball out to the shortstop. He reached up to make the catch. It falls in. The throw to the plate is not in time, and Cato has his third hit. This time of the RBI variety. And it's now 13-5. to That's a big, big run there 
The lead is back up to eight, which matches their biggest lead of the contest. And now the catcher, Dino Svensson. Two out, runner at first, two runs in. 17 hits, 13 runs for the Red Deer Legends. Number three, Hall of Fame, Atlanta Brave third baseman, not Eddie Matthews, Chipper Jones. Base hit, center field. Hit number 18, a quick throw to second, almost got the runner there. Almost an outfield assist. So Dino is aboard. That's his second hit. He's found his way on base each of the four times he's been to the plate, including a fielder's choice. Now lefty. Left me lonely. And the pitch is in there for a called strike. Walk, pop-up, double play. The Cobras have turned three double plays here today. Tempe Diablo Stadium, CAC Desert Division, 50 and over. Keep wanting to call it the Cactus. Here's a slap to the right side where the second baseman stays down on it and throws him out at first. But two more runs come across, and now Red Deer back up by eight on the APN Baseball Network. Now old Glory waving in the wind here, and yeah, I know... There are probably several of you that served in the United States military. Certainly want to thank you for your service. Always good to see that flag up there. I, I hope hope nothing happens here in the next 20 days. I'll tell you what, our country. Whew. Here's Padilla, uh, Cedillo and Ralph Cedillo. I hope I didn't call him Padillo. Cedillo grounds one foul down the line. I don't know. There's just a lot of weird things and unusual things going on in our country and around the world lately. And that one's grounded foul. So Ralph really battling up there. Another inning of work for Phil Letts. His seventh inning of work. His pitch count is probably over 100 through the first six innings. And like I said at the top of the broadcast, these two guys truly are workmen. Workhorses. Ralph Scott Tim here to bat for the Cobras in the top of the seventh inning. Well, did you get the uh, number two and number one guys on our all time home run switch hitters list? That ball got a piece of him. And so a hip batsman. Trying to see if I can't remember if let's. Had walked anybody in this game. He had not issued a free pass until he hit Cedillo right there. Now Leonard. And it's just low for a ball. Well, the second one was a long time great with the Baltimore Orioles. He played first base. It's not Boog Powell. Popped up. And the pitcher calls it. He was probably the only guy that could have made that play. And he'll take care of business for out number one. Runner at first. Fujioka has one for two. A single and a run scored back in the second inning. One thing you like about Phil Letts, and defensive players will tell you this all day long, he is an extremely quick pitcher. And here's a looper into right field, dropping in for a base hit. Nice job by the right fielder to cut that ball off. And runners are at first and second. So Tim has his second hit of the game. Ron Russo, the scheduled hitter, coming up. Scott Leonard, courtesy running. And here's a fly ball to left field, and this is dropping in. So Russo with a base hit. And is this Devin? Yes. Bases are loaded. 12 hits now in total. 
Well, you're down by eight. You're here batting in the top of the seventh inning if you're the Cubs, or the Cubs, the Cobras. Devin looking for his second hit. Had an RBI single back in a two-run second. 13-5, Red Deer. They're in the field with starting pitcher Phil Letts. Probably wants to complete this bad boy. Slap to the right side. They will go second one out there. No, he missed the ball, and it gets away. Two runs are going to come in. Fielder's choice on the play, E4. Two runs come across. Credit Devin with an RBI, his second of the day, and it's 13-7. to seven. Runners will be at first and third. Still only one out. Could use a couple of more runs right here. Wojcicki now batting for the third time. All he's done is singled in a run and doubled. And he's played a solid third base. Getting chastised by the, this crowd here. Here's a ground ball and knocked down on a great defensive play by the third baseman. The run will score another fielder's choice. Second RBI for Rob. Three runs have come across. It's 13 to 8. And we still got plenty of time left. Here's a ball slapped to the shortstop, cut off by the third baseman. And the throw on by Corey Johnson is in time. Corey Johnson has played a solid third base here today. They get three. Seventh inning stretch time from the ballpark. It's 13 to 8. Jeff Lowry back here from the ballpark. We go to the bottom half of inning number seven, and John McVitie and his 123 pitches still out there. Strike called to Sullivan. He had a big three-run double. I think that was the kind of the nail in the coffin, but, hey, the Cobras have fought back. They're only down by five. And they got two more at bats left, and we're going to get this game in well, unless something happens. We should get this game in well before the three hour time limit. O'Sullivan, single, double, walk. Perfect at the plate. The wind, the kick, and the pitch, and a high chopper over the mound, and this is going to be an infield hit. O'Sullivan beats it out with ease, and he has been on base all four times. Hit number 19 for the Red Deer legend, who could be looking at an undefeated round robin record. And here is Rube Waddell. Line drive caught at first base. And Tim tags the bag, and that's a double play. That is the fourth double play turned in by the Cobras. So there's two down in the inning. Goulam, one for three. He hit into one of those four double plays. So you got to tip the cap to this Cobras defense. This one is not over yet, and far from it. Phil Letts, the starting pitcher for Red Deer. You're looking at Jim McVitie for the Cobras. And here's a high fly ball, both still in the game. And this one off the glove of Quincy Marshall. Normally, he makes that catch. That'll be an error on the left fielder. And taking second is Goulam to second. Now, Corey Johnson, who's done a sensational job down at the hot corner here for... Head coach Larry Rube Waddell. Inside ball one. All right, number two on the list. Here he is, the longtime Baltimore first baseman. Spent a few years with the Dodgers. And one of only two switch hitters to ever hit 500 home runs in his career. As this one is skied out to center. And that ball is going to be caught. And Johnson is retired. 
on a fine, fine defensive play by the Cobras. We head to the eighth. 13 to eight. We'll be back. Good inning for Jim McVitie. Phil Letts is back out there as expected. You do you feel like Phil Letts and Jim McVitie are pushing one another here to complete this game? I can hear Phil Letts right now sitting in that dugout. Well, Jim McVitie's in the dugout right now. As this one's grounded up the middle. Actually, he's at the plate. And he grounds one to the shortstop, and there is one down. And we're going to see. Let's see here. This is Bob Patterson who started the game at first base. But I can, you know, you can sense that maybe McVitie is saying, you know what, I know we've been down. We've given up some runs in this game. This is the number one, well, kind of tied for the number one team in this desert division. He don't want to be showed up here by Letts. And Letts doesn't want to be showed up by John McVitie either. So, so let's see what Bob Patterson has to offer here. There was a Bob Patterson who had a, a little stint in the major leagues, left-handed pitcher back in the 90s. Runner at no nobody on one out. Here's the pitch. And it's looped to the third baseman. And the... Well, at least in this game, the always reliable Corey Johnson, two down. See, Bobby Levitt. Back at the top of the order, he's looking for his first hit. That's ball one. Eddie Murray finished his career with 504 career home runs. This guy was, especially his first 10 years, those years in Baltimore, he was He was great. Now, fly ball to center field. That will retire the side, and we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning. Still a five-run Red Deer Legends lead. New hitter is going to be Mike O'Connor for the Red Deer Legends as they bat here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Kind of winding down this morning affair, a 9 a.m. start time from Tempe Diablo Stadium. High fly ball out in the center field, and this ball is going to be caught out number one. Unfortunately, well, let's see if we can get a number. He made a great catch out there. I didn't catch the number, and our apologies. We need numbers on the front of the jerseys. He still hasn't turned around. All right, next up, Rook DeBross. Another great name in this one, but I don't know if that tops Chris Gunzenhauser. I love that name. I mean, you can can market that. In fact, Bill Talon ought to market that guy's last name. Guns and Hauser guns or something, you know. Guns and Hauser's Armory. How about that one? Start up an armory, sell some guns, buy and sell some gold. I think I got a winning business proposition for you. Let me in on it if you want to run with that. Bill's behind the plate, and Jim McVitie is still out there on the mound. I like that. Guns and Hauser Armory. Here's a shot off the pitcher's mound. McVitie comes up with it and throws him out at first base. What a fine play there and out number two. Well, the exit velocity coming off the bat was in the mid-90s thanks to StatCast powered by Google and your AI and all that stuff. Verizon might have something to do with that. Here's the next batter up. Thirty-two is Adam Roberts. Now Dougie Roberts. 
Got his at bat now. It's Adams' chance. That's a pretty hard fastball. And he's, I mean, honestly, he's pushing 150 pitches in this game. That's one of the best, hardest fastball we have seen in this game so far. Talon behind the plate. Playoffs coming up here in this 50 desert tomorrow. And it's going to be interesting to see if Carolina can bounce back from what could very well be a loss here. They're down by five. They still have their last at bat, so don't give up on them yet. This is a team that has averaged as that strike three call by McVitie. He goes eight innings, 150-plus pitches, and... I mean, you talk about not only the endurance, but the stick with us. I'll tell you, what a tremendous job by McVitie. We go to the top of the ninth inning. The Cobras need five to equalize on APN. First pitch inside, ball one. We have the second, third, fourth hitter coming up. Quincy Marshall, Jerry Russell, Bill Talon. Well, you, if you don't know the answer to that trivia question, who was the switch hitter that hit the most home runs in Major League Baseball history? This one, you at least this one, I think everybody would get. Popped him up in the left field and juggled by the left fielder, and he cannot come up with it. I think you got to give Marshall a base hit on that one. That's his second hit of the ball game. And that was a long, long run for Glenn Williams, who's had a great day at the plate. A ball he should have had, but that was a very long run. And now Marshall is on base. Even down five, I expect him to go, and there he goes. And this is his third stolen base of the morning. Jerry Russell, one for three, an RBI in the first. Well... He was one of the most popular players, not only in Yankee history, but in baseball history. Ground ball down to third. It's gobbled up there by Johnson. He throws a one-hopper to the first baseman who makes a nice scoop and gets the out. So that play goes 5-3. to three. Good job once again. So the batter is... Bob Talon, and, or Bill Talon, and here's a fly ball, sorry about that, and caught out in center field. The runner will score, so Bill will be credited with a sacrifice fly, two out in the inning, and that makes it 13-9. Mick the Quick, the Commerce Comet, Mickey Mantle, finished his career with 536 career home runs the most prolific switch hitter in baseball history. Cedillo is the last hope here for the Cobras. Down by four, nobody on two out, and he grounds one down to Johnson. He stays down on it. He throws the first. It's picked off there by Lefty, and the ball game is over. Red Deer wins it by a score of 13-9. Phil Letts, behind the great defense of Corey Johnson, goes the distance. He picks up the win. John McVitie will suffer the loss, 13-9, as the Red Deer legend finish undefeated in pool play at 6-0. This has been a presentation of APN Video Sports. Our website is apnvideo.com. Special thanks to Bill Talon for setting up today's broadcast and a pleasure bringing this broadcast to our friends north of the border. Jeff Lowry saying so long from Tempe to Oblo Stadium.